Hey, how's it going? I'm Spencer, and welcome to my first interview on my channel. Today, I have with me JW Crewall. JW is a Pokemon uh, card player, content creator, bassoonist, and all-around good guy. Hey, JW, how are you doing today? I am doing very well, Spencer. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. So let's let's get down to the interview. So the first question is, who are you? Who am I? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I am a husband been married for a little over a year i am a christian uh, i am a musician i play the bassoon i am a pokemon player so i do i've been playing the game for about 10 years now and i am a soon to be programmer learning some computer science here in a, in a couple weeks starting a boot camp nice sounds yeah. good yeah all right, next question is, what is something that truly makes you happy? Something that truly makes me happy is, well, I just love games in general. Uh, Pokemon, I, I do really enjoy the card game. I If I didn't enjoy the card game, I wouldn't still be playing it after 10 years. But just games in general, I love the way certain games can allow you to manage resources in a way where you have to use every tool at your disposal to create a favorable outcome for yourself. I find that to be a real expression of my creativity and okay. my ingenuity to mm -hmm. come up with, you know, a, a strategy that in the end, like it may, and sometimes even I'll, I'll be, you know, feel success, even mm -hmm. if it doesn't win me that game, but, being able to utilize all the tools at my disposal to try to come up with a way to, you know, win various board games or, or the Pokemon mm -hmm. trading card game. I find that really enjoyable. So it's like figuring out the puzzle almost, that kind of thing. Figuring like... out the puzzle. Yeah. It, it's more the journey. I mean, obviously the result is a really mm -hmm. big deal, you know, and, and it's really nice <laughs> to have a positive result, For but, sure. but a lot of it is that journey and, trying to get to that favorable result is really um, something that I enjoy a great deal. Yeah, fair enough, man, fair enough. Uh, what is one of your fondest childhood memories? One of my fondest childhood memories has to be my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. So they grew up in rural Michigan, up in the Thumb, and they lived on a farm and you know, they had been married for, well, so it was their 50th wedding anniversary. They ended up making it, I think, to like 65 before they, you know, they, they passed within the last hmm. year. Um, but that, that, that celebration was just, I, I remember it because I was in that stage, you know, I, I was in my teens or maybe early teens. And so, you know, life was just still very... I was very excited by a lot of things. And this was a big event where, you know, everyone was coming in and there are all these people I didn't know. So it's kind of like nervous, but excited. And I was seeing cousins that I hadn't seen in a while that I really enjoyed and, mm. um, and, and just playing with them. I, I remember we were running around and, and I was, I don't know, the, the person that was trying to be tagged. And I remember mm. running into the porta potty that they had, uh, <laughs> that they had rented. And then it stuck out to me because they were, you know, trying. It was like maybe the most scared that I felt because mm -hmm. they were trying to like push me over in the, <laughs> <laughs> rattling me in yeah. that uh, in that place. And um, but that was that was just a, a really, I don't know, fun time. I mean, aside from from the jar jarring uh, situation that mm -hmm. I found mm -hmm. myself in, it was it was a really fun time because, again, you get to eat a lot of food. You get to see people that you really like and. Uh, it was all surrounding two people that mm. I really cared about and, and really loved and in my grandparents. So that was a really great memory oh. for me. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, it sounds like you have a pretty big family. Fairly. Yeah. I, okay. my dad has four other siblings. So, mm, okay, uh, yeah. so yeah, it, it, it's pretty big. And then we have a pretty large extended family as well. All right. Sounds good. All right. So next question is, if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be and why? Well, I think it would have to be probably really just any biblical figure for me. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my faith really dictates my life. And um, so 
a big, you know, I, I would love to sit down with, with, you know, Jesus Christ, right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and talk with him. Um, other biblical figures were going through the book of Genesis right now. So it would be really interesting to speak with, uh, you know, it, it, there are a couple ways of, of kind of interpreting the Bible as being, uh, especially in the early parts of the Bible as being like, um, just allegorical or, uh, or literal. And so if, if it is literal, I would love to speak with like Noah, you know, I think that mm-hmm. would be just like insane, you know, did this actually happen the way that it said? Um, I think it would be fascinating also. Ah, cool answer. All right. So this one, what never fails to upset you? What never fails to upset me? Yeah, that's a good one. I, I try, I looked over the questions, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it'd be kind of nice to kind of have this off the cuff. Yeah, no, fair enough. That's good. So what really upsets me? Man, that's tough. Do you do something super minor? Yeah, no, absolutely. Stubbing your toe or, you know, (laughs) the whole world type thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel it. I feel it. I think like right now you look at a a local uh, or or a a very time sensitive topic of of Mm COVID-19. And I think a lot of people are upset about you know, the people that don't wear masks or or whatever it might be. And I was pretty upset at at our government's response to the pandemic, just in the sense that I I pretty much lost my my musician uh, income, you know, from that. And and I was on a really, um, I thought, a very solid track to once again, uh, gaining, you know, employment in the music industry full time. Mm -hmm. And I kind of felt that ripped away from me at the start of the pandemic. And I think a lot of it that I was most upset with was, was just the rhetoric. I mean, I can understand that um, people were trying to be individualistic Mm -hmm. and I don't, I'm not mad at any one person necessarily for like not wearing a mask or wearing a mask, but I felt like the, the leadership of our government Mm -hmm. maybe wasn't at a point that I felt like my livelihood was respected. Um, and so that really, really upset me at the beginning of COVID and, and pretty much throughout where it was kind of a, uh, not really a, a, a mandate on masks until, you mm. know, things got to, things started to get really bad where everything had to shut down and, and just the rhetoric coming out from the top was a little frustrating. Yeah, for sure. It's just like, it feels like you go forward some days and then, Other days, it's just like, wow, we went right back to the start. Yeah. And I mean, of course, (laughs) and, you know, and this is not to say like, because if, if, if things shut down, you know, that's going to affect other people too. Mm -hmm. Whereas Mm -hmm. if they stay open, that affects other people. So it's like, it's not, I'm not mad at any person necessarily. I just feel Mm -hmm. like we could have had uh, a quicker response to what had happened. And and maybe that would, I, I would have felt a little bit more respected in what I did. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, Canada didn't get hit as bad, but still, like, regardless, stuff is, stuff is still happening, and, you know, yeah, it's just, yeah, same, same deal here. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so what is one band, artist, or group you think people should check out? I really enjoy a lot of the stuff that my parents liked. Okay. So, my favorite band growing up was the B-52s. Okay. I find them to be fascinating in what they produce, uh, their music captivates me in a way that not a lot of other music does in that it has a lot of harmony. It has a lot of mm-hmm. uniqueness about the structure of the music. And I, I love them. Another band that I really enjoy is, well, another artist I really enjoy is Cat mm-hmm. Stevens. Okay. And I find him also to be very, very... Um, expressive with his language mm-hmm. in particular and i also really like as, as a third one the mamas and the papas i think they are oh so good because their mm-hmm. harmonies are amazing and they do things if you really dig into some of the songs it's it's un it's uncommon it's very uncommon some of the stuff that they did uh for that time so i just i like all three of those so can we uh, look forward to some bassoon covers of any of those songs of any of those artists coming up? <laughs> um, maybe. I mean, right. you know, I always, I always feel like I have like bassoon plans 
mm. uh, on the list, but then they're just like, you know, the priority just isn't quite there. And, you know, I'd love to do more with that, but it feels like I'm spreading my time a little bit uh, between just, just general maintenance of bassoon and then, and then running a YouTube channel. And then now preparing for coding and, and all of that. So it feels, it feels like I, I, I'm always constantly in my mind, like, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? And that certainly has crossed my mind of like, you know, really get into like bassoon covers and bassoon uh, um, music and, and things like mm. this to, to present to kind of the populace, but yeah. it just hasn't quite come to fruition yet. All right. Looking forward to it. The day it comes now, right? Jay? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. What is one thing you'd like to do before you die? Probably the cop out answer is to travel a lot. Yeah. But I think that's fair. I think right now for me is to find meaningful employment. I worked mm -hmm. a year and a half in an orchestra full time down mm -hmm. in Florida. And that was a really nice time in my life. You know, I, I really look back at that, you know, almost, you know, weekly and just think mm -hmm. like, oh man, I, I wish I was still there. And, you know, can't be there for a number of reasons. But, um, it it was uh, it it was a time where I felt like I was uh, contributing to mm -hmm. like a goal, and you mm -hmm. know some people might argue, okay, well maybe that's not the most um, worthwhile goal, but I really felt it that way because you know I th I think a lot of people had their um, when when you're an artist and you can and you can hear the feedback from some people and they say, hey, you you really impacted me with the music that you played. I think that was really quite quite an experience um just to hear that because before i was playing in kind of regional groups mm -hmm. i had a lot of jobs in these regional groups but they didn't quite make the impact just because the the quality of music wasn't as high and then when i joined the uh, the this full-time group down in florida the florida orchestra you know, we were playing with world-class musicians mm -hmm. and all my colleagues were, you know, either had a lot of experience or were certainly like some of the, you know, best and the brightest mm -hmm. up and coming young mm -hmm. artists in the field. And so, yeah, I, I think now it's trying to find that sense of purpose again, be it in music, be it in, you know, Pokemon, be it mm -hmm. in um, coding. I just, yeah, I, I miss that. Yeah. There's something, um, so surreal when you play music with other people especially i can't even imagine playing it on like an orchestral level yeah but just myself i just play guitar but i remember the times i used to like mess around with friends and play in a kind of like you know just like a garage band kind of thing yeah and, you know that feeling when you're just like in unison that kind of thing yeah i mean it's well just, just unreal. yeah i mean yeah you say just playing guitar but i mean that's very mm -hmm. valid um form of expression and mm -hmm. you know it's it's different than orchestral playing, but it's no less valuable to certain mm -hmm. people. Um, you know, the impact could be different, you know, depending mm -hmm. on how skilled you are and, and your audience sure. and things like mm -hmm. this, but uh, it certainly has value if, if you allow it to have value. Yeah. All right. So next question is, what is one thing that most people don't know about you? One thing that most people don't know about me. Huh. That's another really nice question um what's one thing that most people don't know about me well i feel like i'm very i'm a very open person what's one thing that most people do? well i have a few stories that i can't tell that's fair <laughs> that's okay that's all right <laughs> i do have those stories maybe one day i just they're out there i've mm. i've i've teased them a lot but uh but yeah, that's that's maybe one thing some people don't know about. I mean, I play a bunch of other instruments as well. So okay. I play the ukulele a little bit. It's been awesome. a little while since I picked it up. Again, a lot of things on the docket for me. But I had to learn a bunch of these instruments in my undergrad doing, I, I was a music education major. So I okay. learned, I, I played saxophone in high school a little bit. So okay. bassoon, saxophone, ukulele played a little bit of tuba. Uh, I knew trumpet probably at a high school level, French horn, probably at like an eighth or a ninth grade level. Um, you know, never quite got around to flute. That one always eluded me, but clarinet, uh, trombone, you know, all these different instruments I could, I could probably pick up to, to a middle school, you know, performance level at any time. So 
That's sweet. I, I, I foresee this uh, video of you playing all the different instruments, like, you know, just like you in like each quadrant playing the different instrument. It's like your the, own orchestra. Yeah, those are <laughs> those are really cool. I've seen some people that are much, much more highly skilled than I am doing that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And that I mean, that that really is impressive because it does. Oh, take, yeah, for sure. It does take a lot of different uh you know, ways to blow, you know, mm. saxophone versus bassoon or, or mm-hmm. oboe mm-hmm. versus flute. Like it's all very, very different. So I have a lot of respect for those people that can do, you know, those many different instruments and make it yeah. sound good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done for sure. Yeah. All right. And next question is, how would you like to be remembered? Another good question. Um, I'd like to be remembered for, uh, you know, the way that I treat other people you know the 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 openness that i have with my time and my money and my effort and yeah you know, i want to be remembered as someone that you know loves other people well whether that's my wife whether that's um you know somebody i'm doing an interview with whether that's somebody that i meet in a stream or somebody that i meet in a job or um you know the homeless or the orphaned i i want to be remembered as somebody that in every relationship that they pursue is someone that loves unconditionally. Oh, good answer. Good answer. All right. So we're going to switch uh, gears a little bit and go to do some uh, rapid fire questions. Uh, yeah. You can, if you want to stop and elaborate on them hundred percent. Yeah. Go for it. Let's do it. All right. First question. Favorite sports team. The Detroit Red Wings. All right. Dogs or cats? Cats. Spring or fall? Fall. M and M's or Skittles? M and M's. Uh, one of your favorite movies? Favorite movies? Uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Adventurous or relaxing vacation? Relaxing. Best place you have visited? Probably Zion National Park. Uh, so what's your go-to snack at a convenience store? Go-to snack at a convenience store. Oh, it's, uh, it's gotta be those little starburst bites that are like unwrapped. Do you know those? Okay. They're like this big, I don't know if they have them in Canada, but they're like, you just, they're unwrapped. They're like starburst. gummies or no? No, they're like they're starburst, like, but okay. they're tiny Okay. and they're unwrapped. I don't know what they're called, but I love them. <laughs> <Okay. things. laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I've seen them here, but I'll I'll definitely check them out. It's, so it's either that out. it's either that or Swedish fish. But yes, yeah, so you got to go check okay. out these little Starburst. They're they're so I don't know why they're so good. Maybe it's like they're so easy, you know? Because mm-hmm. one of the things about Starburst is like, you know, you got to unwrap the thing. They're all individually who, wrapped. Like who wants? Yeah, to do who has that? time for that? You know, stuff, who has right? the time for that? You know? Exactly. And you're trying to <laughs> yeah, sure. you're trying to learn all the instruments. You don't got time mm-hmm. to unwrap your Starburst. Exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, one of your favorite uh, TV shows or movies as a child? As a child, I really enjoyed Static Shock and oh, yeah. the Jackie Chan oh, yeah. Talisman <laughs> show. Mm-hmm. Do you know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I really liked you know WB at that time. I ah, know, fair enough. They had, they had some solid programs. They did. All right, so these are more specific to you. Favorite generation of Pokemon? Favorite generation of Pokemon Gen 2. All right, cool. Yeah. So this one's this one might be hard. What is one deck? So you have to pick one deck to mm-hmm. play for the rest of your life. Wow. What is that one deck you you pick? Okay. Any, yeah, any, any deck throughout history. Okay. Yeah, I I will always look back on this deck list as being and to kind of bring it back to our first point of being uh, using every resource that you ever you know in your deck to, to create win conditions for yourself. And I played this deck. It was this Empoleon deck, uh, in 20, like 13 or something. It was Empoleon. I like to joke that it was a recycle deck because it used this card called recycle, which allowed mm-hmm. you to flip a coin and put any card from your discard pile on top of your deck. So what you would do is play that card with the Empoleon, which had a, an ability that let you draw two cards. It was basically a trade. And then you would trade into that card that you put on the top of your deck. And then you would just get a bunch of bench Pokemon and this Empoleon would swing for, you know, a bunch of damage for one energy 
and you just, you know, swing, swing, swing mm-hmm. into uh, the opponent's Pokemon. And then you could, you know, you played some max potions. So maybe they, you know, hit into you, but they didn't knock you out. So then you could mm-hmm. heal and then you could recycle that max potion back to the top and reuse it again next turn. And man, I just love that deck. I ended up losing in top 32 back when the, it was a kind of a bracket style mm-hmm. up in top 32. You know, you would, you would bracket off and then, and then the winner would play in top 16 and then top eight and then so on and so forth. And I lost in top 32 to a good friend, but I had like very suboptimal starts, like all three games. And then it came down Mm. to the third game and he, he got this like ridiculous combo on the last turn. I'll never forget it. And he ended up winning and it was just the saddest thing ever. Cause I knew, I knew that deck was worthy of winning that tournament. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, What is one change you'd like to make to the game? And it could be a mechanic, could be just, Whatever, however, whatever you think. Sure, to the Pokemon trading card game, I, I think it would just be, I, I don't want to sound too critical, but I think just to, like, you know, I would I would change the client a little bit more. I think mm. we're, we're losing a really great opportunity as the game to compete with other online card games like Magic oh, yes. Yes. and Hearthstone. Mm. And, and I, I see it, again, more as like the opportunity. I'm not necessarily upset, because I think some of the decisions that Pokemon has made in regards to the online client probably are have some logic and some reasoning to them that you know the general player base just doesn't know about. So I want to give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, I think there is this massive, massive, enormous opportunity to make yourself the premier card game. Not just you know, not just a a, a not just something that, you know, TCG players just, you know, okay, mm. well, f- you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling Pokemon this year, mm. you know, as opposed to mm. I was feeling magic last year. I'm feeling Pokemon this year, but I think a card game in the sense that it could, it could really appeal to so many more people. If we could just fix our, our client, make it a little bit nicer to look at, uh, introduce a ranked ladder system to, mm. you know, grind for the players that are a little bit more competitive while still keeping kind of a, an unranked system for players that are a little more casual. Um, and a few other changes there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I come from a Magic background, so yeah. I played a bit of Magic online. And then when I came to Pokemon, I played yeah. it online. I was just like, wow, this is like so basic relative to Magic yeah. online. It would be so great to see, you know, what bigger tournaments. You know, I had the Pokemon's essentially three rounds. Yeah. But Magic, they're weekly, um, like higher tier tournaments where there's hundreds of people entering. Not, not to say that you can't do that on Pokemon, but like officially... Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Organized by external. People. Exactly. I think there are just a few things that I, I, from my perspective, the reason that Pokemon hasn't adopted these models mm-hmm. is because they're trying to keep it a casual game. Mm-hmm. But I feel as though it's a missed opportunity again, just yes. because it could be so big. If we had a client like magic, I could see, you know, Pokemon, trading card game just exploding because it just has such a great brand recognition Mm. in general in the general populace that you're not just targeting you don't have to just target those um you know those hardcore gamers right Mm -hmm. you can target just a general audience and i think you could suck a lot of them in with a little bit more um intriguing of a client for sure uh one another question is what is your go-to song when you pick up the bassoon like the song you play it's like you don't even think about it. You're like the first you pick up a bassoon and you like play kind of thing. Man, that's cool. That's a cool question. I I generally don't have too much of that, but I really okay. like to play the Saint Saint Bassoon Sonata. It starts out uh, on a on a nice little note. You can just kind of like if you can breathe it into existence, which is really mm-hmm. hard to do, it mm-hmm. just creates this really magical effect. You have the piano that's doing these descending arpeggios mm-hmm. and it's just a really beautiful, I think the bassoon is often typecast mm-hmm. in the way that you have you know, certain actors like Jonah Hill is typecast as this mm-hmm. kind of goofball. I think it's mm-hmm. the same way for bassoon. You know, Bassoon is the Jonah Hill of acting. In the sense that we are always this goofy thing. We're always mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, we're not really ever the main character unless we mm. are this goofball. And so mm. I love it when the bassoon can be showcased in a way that's that exhibits beauty and mm. um, finesse. Yeah, fair enough. 
And is there one board game you would recommend to players? Uh, something probably maybe like less well known. Sure. I keep up with all of the rankings online. So on mm-hmm. Board Game Geek, they have a ranking system and we are very big fans. My wife and I and uh, my roommate are very big fans of that. The two games that we've been playing a lot recently are Terraforming Mars, which okay. I will always love, um, and Scythe, which I oh, yeah, Scythe also bird. really yeah, enjoy. Yeah. So Terraforming Mars is, the premise is you're on Mars and it's uninhabited except for you and and you know your opponents. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to build up through your corporation a livable habitat for mm-hmm. The people of mars and so you're using resources to build cities and you're using resources to build greeneries and all the while your board is filling up now there are some limiting factors to Mm. how much you can do on mars for instance you can only raise the oxygen level a certain amount before you know of course it would become like too much oxygen Mm -hmm. in the air for for habitable life and then you can only place so much water on the Mm -hmm. on the surface and you can only place so many hexes on the board in terms of cities and greeneries so there's a couple of limiting factors there but i find that game to be fascinating because there's a lot of uh, production that happens in between rounds you can accrue a lot of resources but which resources you go after at which time is really crucial kind of the pacing of the game is really interesting and then the scythe game is you know you said you you know like it yeah i played it yeah i i like it a lot because it's a lot of this kind of tension there's a lot of tension Mm. in the game between you know do i want to attack now do i want to just build up my board um there can be really good positives to both and very big negatives to you know having your opponent you know do something that you don't expect so Mm. that game i like for the sense that you can plan out future events like turns in advance Mm -hmm. and and it's highly strategic and i really value that yeah fair enough fair enough all right we're gonna wrap up with this last question and it is what are some words of wisdom you like to live by words of wisdom that i like to live by well i again i place all uh trust in in god and i um try to throw my cares on him as it were Mm. so i know that i'm not alone in this world Mm. when i have um when i have my my savior with me by my side and um so i you know i I try there's a there's a passage in in philippians that says do not be anxious about anything for in everything through prayer and supplication present your request to god And then it goes on to say the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, which I find to be very true, um, will safeguard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And so I am just anxiety that I feel um, Mm -hmm. is certainly there, but what you do with that anxiety is very important because it could either eat away at you Mm -hmm. and destroy you Mm -hmm. or, or you can take that and, and, give it in in my case i i can give it to some um you know to god to an entity Mm. that i that i trust with my life and um and not not feel the impact the negative impact of that anxiety awesome sounds good well thanks a lot for coming in on my channel jw i really appreciate it like i said you were the first guest so you always be that number one spot. <laughs> hey, well, that sounds great, Spencer. Best of luck with this endeavor. I think you'll find a lot of interesting answers from the interesting people that you talk to. Thanks. Uh, anything you'd like to just say, like talk about your channel, talk about? Yeah, well, you know, I do run my own YouTube channel and uh, it is quite a journey to do so. I, I again, mm-hmm. wish you the best of luck in, Thank you. in your endeavors. And uh, that's over the Pokemon YouTube channel, Flex Daddy Righteous. I wasn't happy with the original outro on my original video, so I'm redoing that right now. So first, I just want to say thanks to JW for coming on the channel. I greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to help me out. Thanks, everyone else, for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Please come back to see another interview soon. Take care, and I'll see you next video.